I guess we're good. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everybody. If you're joining us online, we're so excited to have you online. If you're joining, we got some special people in the room. Not that you weren't special, right? Uh, Everybody's yeah. special. Everyone's special. We got some of our friends here in the room. Are you guys doing good? Anyone excited? I said, are you guys doing good? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, and if you're at home, you can scream as well. Just make sure that your parents' room isn't next to yours. Otherwise, they might yeah. get mad at you. Or they might, you might just freak them out. You might freak them out, and they might not let you watch service, and we can't have that happen. Nope. It's at 7 p.m. on a Sunday, right? Yep, 7 p.m. on the a Sunday. The best time to have a service. I have my popcorn over there waiting for me. We've had uh, we've had it on a Wednesday. We've had it on a... Uh, at, I think at some point we had it on a Friday. Did we have it on a Friday? Did we? Do you guys remember? I don't even remember. Okay, if they don't remember, we uh, definitely don't remember. I mean, anyway, we're super excited for this service. As you can see behind us, uh, it looks different than anything we've done before, right? So we're actually in the main sanctuary of Palm Valley Church, right? We finally got this building. They finally said, you know what? You can have it, and you can bring some friends with you. And we did, like we said earlier. And are you guys doing good again? Yeah. Yes, I'm super excited to be I'm here. So, I'm so I hope, pumped for I time. hope you are excited at home. Like Adrian said, you got your popcorn, you got your... What else? Like your Coca-Cola. What some? What are some stuff you guys had with you during service? Did you guys have something to drink? What's up? Twizzlers. I don't okay, I hear everybody here saying water. Yeah. Everybody I, said I, they I'm had pretty water. sure that people on the camera can't hear it, but it's so loud in it's here. Super it's loud. so it's loud. It's like in here, crazy. Oh my god. Super crazy. It's all safe in here, but it's super loud. It's actually hurting my ears. I need to stop. Yeah. My ear drums. I can't even. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point anymore. I don't either. It's so loud in here. <laughs> anyway, so we've got uh, an amazing service. Completely it's be awesome. Amazing service. Uh, what do we have coming up, actually? Let's tell them. We actually have this segment called The Real Life of PVC. I think it's youth. Real Youth Staff. Real Youth Staff. Real Youth Staff. The last one that came out was when? Trivia, anybody? Because I legitimately don't remember. It's been, I think it's been like six or seven weeks now. It's been, it's been quite a while. So uh, it's because we've been busy with other acting projects. Uh, I think uh, one of us was in Tenet. And the yeah, other someone, one, yeah, someone went to the one movie of us, Tenet. Uh, Dom, he was trying to get a director's role Dom for like a, for the running office for a director's role. Yeah, he's, Dom was Dom was swamped. We almost after, lost Dom. We almost uh, lost Dom. I'm gonna say that. After the last real use of you the little staff of PVC, MTV called them up. VH, uh, what is it? VHS. VHS. Uh, <laughs> it's not VHS. The, the Tully's one. It's VH1. Every, everything. Anyway, everyone. I don't think you guys were, Cartoon Network even called them up. They wanted him to voice a character too. So Dom's been flooded with calls. So please stop calling him. Yeah, like he is here to stay at PVC. Am I right? Yeah. We're keeping Dom. We Miller. love Dom. Dom here, hashtag it. If you put a picture, put keep Dom here. Hashtag keep Dom here. We need here. him. We need anyway, him. Anyway. Because so, if not, I'm going to have to edit, and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, because it, uh, once Dom's gone, I mean. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know do. what we're going to do either. Anyway, so yeah, real used to have a PVC. Brand new episode. No correlation with the episode before. Not Absolutely no correlation. Yep. It's just standalone. And we should we do another one, even though you guys haven't seen it? Should we do a whole season of it? Who knows? We might. We it, might. It's honestly. so loud in here. I think they said yes, but I think they also oh. said just get the ball rolling and show the video. Let's check it out. Let's do it. So we're about to launch our new merch, and we got all the white shirts, and we're tie dyeing them. But here's the thing. The office has been kind of stressful lately, and I don't think Michelle can handle the stress. Michelle tends to snack a lot when she's under stress. Yes, I'm a little stressed, but it has to get done. And we just have a few more shirts, so I asked Sam and Adam to come help. Hey, let's start. Now, okay, so we don't have a lot of time, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you an example and I need you to follow. Why are you only looking at him? I'm here too. Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. So, put your... So this should be pretty easy. It's just tie-dyeing. Like, how hard can it actually be? You're going to twist in the middle. No, slower. Or not. Make sure it's perfect. Can you help me? No, get it, figure it out. Why is it drums? sticking out like this? If you can play drums, you can tie dye. Oh! Look at okay, that. No, 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 no. My already? example. My example. Follow. Oh, man, I'm so good at this. I need you to make sure you wear gloves. Sam? What do you want from me? Wear gloves. Whatever. This is dumb. 
Diet, but no, 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 no. Oh. no. You're wearing this shirt. Yeah, but this looks fine to me, Michelle. I don't know. No, wait, I, wait. I, oh, it's I, like a science no, project. I can't. I can't. <laughs> this is not going how I expected it, but I have an idea. Hello? Katie. Hey. I need your help. I need the kids team to come and like, I just, I need, can you come ASAP? For sure, we're on our way. Thank God, thank you. Pause, let's wait, take wait, a break. Wait, 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 I'm not let's done Let's take yet. a break and go to lunch, yeah? Go oh. get some Chipotle. Mm, sounds good actually. Take your time, eat inside maybe, wear a mask, be safe. I cannot believe my eyes. <laughs> so we're on the kids team. That's Hannah, and that's Lou. Michelle, what's going on here? They came back quicker than I thought. This is going to be awkward. Well, you guys weren't catching me. I asked the kids team to come over and help while you were at lunch. Schmizzin, that's what I say. But they fixed it. So, because you were doing. I thought we did a good job, Sam. I had a feeling an issue was brewing, but I didn't expect the tea to be this hot. You mean to tell me that I did this for nothing? You know what they call me at Chipotle? They call me Papa Smurf at Chipotle. Why couldn't you have just told us that we weren't good at tie-dyeing? Fair. Well, you're soft and usually you get offended and I don't want to hurt your feelings. Me soft? Perfect. Look at you girls. So creative. You're not needed. That's all I needed again. We didn't really sign up for this drama, so it's time for us to go. Michelle, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. This is one big mess, but I'm here to clean it up. So can I give you a little piece of advice? Yes. Just give your team a chance. They're good guys. You should go to them. Okay. I'm gonna fix this. Hey guys, I just want to say I'm sorry and Hannah really opened my eyes to a brand new world and I won't be mean next time and I'll let you know directly when I don't like something. Friends? I was doing that, and I had no idea how that comes together. So we gotta give it up to Dom. We just gotta give him a shout out. He does amazing, we love him. Um, if you're watching us online, we're so glad uh, that you're joining us. Um, we do have some friends in the room, and we're so excited that you guys are here today. Um, you guys excited? One thing that I think I've missed so much is, yes, it's coming to church, but there's something so powerful where we can worship together and where we can sing on the top of our lungs and agree what we're seeing, something happened. Scripture says where two or more are gathered, they're the presence of God is, and guess what? There's more than two of us in here, right? So here's what I want us to do. We're gonna worship like we never worshiped before. If you're, if you're watching online, right where you're at, you can worship on the top of your lungs. Like Sam said, if your mom's next to you in the room, Keep it down a little bit. But in here, we're gonna worship with all our hearts. So hey, stand to your feet and let's worship our almighty God together. Oh. I'm so need to
Just what's left beyond my control I don't control 
Yes, they responded. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're watching online, so glad that you're joining in. And if you're in the room, super excited that you're here. First ever PVC Youth Live recording. That just gets Boom. me excited, man. So cool. Yeah. So if this is your first time here or watching online, my name is Micah. I'm the youth pastor. This is Adam. He's also one of the youth pastors here. And uh, you, you hang out with middle school. It's true. Which we love middle schoolers. Shout out to all the middle schoolers that are here yes. tonight. Yes. And I, I know there's some. a few that just joined us uh, for, from Step Up. So yep. that's pretty cool. So super sure. excited that you guys are here. My kid's coming next year. What? Get ready. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, Mac is going to be a sixth grader, but we Remember. don't got to talk about that right now. <laughs> uh, so if you've been following along, uh, we've been in this series talking about trust and specifically looking at the life of Abraham and just kind of his faith journey. And so I want us to all be on the same page. And so I want to recap real quick on week one. Our kind of key verse is found in Genesis chapter one. So if you have your Bibles, you can follow along with us. Bible app or paper Bible, whatever. But Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 is the first time that God speaks to Abraham. His name at this point is actually Abram. This is what he yeah. says. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Now, that's a pretty cool command. But if you think about the context of it and then what God actually said, it's like, wait, what? It actually took tremendous faith to do this because yeah. God says, okay, I want you to leave your home. I want you to leave everything that you've ever known, right? This is where he's grown up. He has friends. He carved his name into a tree, right? Like he can tell, I broke my arm over there. Like he has stories. This is his homeland. And God says, hey, I want you to leave. And God doesn't give him any details. God doesn't even tell him where he's going. It's not like, hey, I want you to go to San Antonio or Minneapolis or the zoo at Brownsville. He, he has no idea how long or whatever. It's just leave and go to a land that I will Show you, And so the point of week one was to look at just the tremendous faith that it took Abraham to say, okay, God, I'm going to go. I'm going to take literally steps of faith. And I believe that as I go, you're going to direct, you're going to guide, and you're going to provide for me. And so kind of to sum up week one, when we act in faith, God will give us all the details that we need. Yeah, so good. It's a lot of, there's a lot in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like the Bible. And uh, week two, you had another amazing message. You're like on a streak or something, bro. It's, it's like a series. Big, yeah, yeah, like a series. <laughs> but uh, week two, um, the main thing that popped out at me was just be patient and trust in God. And the same thing we pulled from the story of Abram, and it's found in Genesis 12, 2. It says, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. This is what God's telling Abram. But the problem is Abram means father. But Abram was 75 years old, and God promises this great nation. And later, Ab Abram turned into Abraham, which means father of many. And he still hadn't had kids at that and point. And he still hadn't had kids. <laughs> and so it's like, what in the, what in the world? Like, this is pretty crazy. And, and it, every time I hear Abraham, I think of the song, the old school song. Maybe some of you know it, but the Father Abraham song had many Anybody? sons. Yeah. Do you know it? Sing out loud. No one knows it. No, okay. <laughs> but it reminds me of that. But it's so, it's so amazing because there was a promise. And God fulfills the promise, but it took 25 years to fulfill the promise, to begin the process of this promise of the great nation. Mm -hmm. And the whole point for me was be patient and trust in God no matter how long it takes. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it definitely doesn't happen when we want it to. No, absolutely not. So I want to jump into the verse that we're going to look at to start us off this week. It's really going to be a story. And so we have to go all the way to chapter 22. So if you're following along, get to chapter 22. And then in verse 1, it literally says, sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham's already proven that he's got a lot of faith right. because he did leave and go to a land that God would show him. So he's already stepped out. But then it says God came and he tested Abraham's faith. And when we think of tests, I, I don't know about you, I don't want to speak for you, but for me, I never really liked tests, mm -hmm. right? Whenever the teacher said, hey, we're having a test today, it wasn't like, I was like, yeah, like, I don't like tests. Do you like tests? You know, it's stressful, and you always, I always felt underprepared, and then you forget something, you're like, oh, I'm going to fail, right? But, but think about what a test is. A test actually leads to, like, a graduation. Yep. For those of you guys, you're officially in high school now. You're no longer in middle school. You, get, you finished eighth grade. Well, to finish eighth grade, maybe not this year would be a great example, but typically <laughs> you have to pass some tests, right? And then you get to go to high school. Or those of you that are seniors, you're going to pass tests this year, and then you're going to graduate high school. And I remember that moment when I graduated high school, and I passed all the tests and everything, and I said, I never have to do that again. There's going to be lots of other things in life that I'm going to have to challenge. I'm going to have more tests, but those are over. And so 
when you pass a test, when you go through something and you overcome or you, you, you pass the test, it leads to something better. And so I want us to just think of point number one like this. Tests are good. Hmm. They're not necessarily fun, yeah. but they're good because they do something to us. They prove something. And so God is testing where Abraham's faith is at at this point in Scripture. Yeah, and that reminds me of just a verse. I love this verse. It's found in James chapter 1, verse 2, and here's what it says. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it, consider it an opportunity for great joy, which is totally like opposite thinking, but it's anyway. It's totally backwards. Uh, and ver- that's verse 2. Verse 3 says this, For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And when I think endurance, I think of like exercising. And it reminded me, Mike and I, we got this random itch, and we decided to do a half marathon. This was a terrible idea. And we were like... Half of a marathon, by the way, that's 13.1 miles of running. I don't know why people do it. It's not very fun. Well, unless you're... Okay, the problem was I did no training for it. I was like, I'm young. I'm good. I did lots of training. I ran like once leading up to this thing. So I was <laughs> for like half was, a mile. I was way better off than he was. 100% more training. But the, but I, I ran this race and for like six miles, like I was good. Like I was at least top 5%. Gerald was in front and I was trying to keep up with Gerald. And I was like, as long as I see him, I'm good. And eventually he just disappeared. And uh, But after the six miles, I started getting cramps. I, I yeah, I wasn't, I, I started to have older people pass me and it was a, uh, yeah, Lots checks. of old ladies past me. Oh, yeah, it was uh, uh, Tyrell didn't make it, so I feel kind of good that he did. Go. Strauss <laughs> ran this race, and he passed me. I was like, oh, man, I'm good. Yeah, Strauss I'm probably passed me. But I think the, the point of this is, like, whenever you, you work out and you lead up to something, you're testing yourself. Like, you run a mile. How fast can I run a mile? Can I run a mile? Do I have to walk in between? And it builds towards something else. And yeah. that was not our experience. Yeah, but, yeah, because we didn't train for it. Like, we uh-huh. did nothing. We didn't allow our endurance to grow. And if... You should yeah. have seen this guy the next day trying to walk. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen that old school movie. It's a classic, The Wizard of Oz. Anybody? Wizard of Oz. You know the Tin Man? One. Adam was walking like the Tin Man, but with no knees. It was like, yeah, it was I pretty bad. I, it was slow I motion. Went to it preach. was great. <laughs> I actually went to service the next day because it was a couple days later, and I tried to get on the stage. Like, I need a ladder. Someone help me. You couldn't get up the step. It was yeah. great. I'm telling you, you had to be there. But yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, as we continue reading in, in, in Genesis and in chapter 22, the chapter goes on and it shows how God tests Abraham. And in Genesis 22, verse 2, it says, Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Now, we got to talk about this because this yeah. is crazy. Right. If you're new to this whole thing, you just read that verse, you'd be like, who is this God? I'm not a fan. But <laughs> here's what I want us to take away from this story, and this is kind of what we're getting to tonight, is that God wants us to trust him with what is most important to us. Yeah. Isaac, as we've looked at the last two weeks, that was probably the most important thing to Abraham. This is his one and only son. It was a child of promise. He had waited 25 years for this kid, and God says, hey, I want... Essentially, I want the kid back. I want you to do this extreme thing. I want you to offer him instead of a sheep or a goat or whatever. I want you to lay him on the altar. I want you to sacrifice him, like kill him. Mm-hmm. And it was a test. Because remember, it said God tested Abraham's faith. And this reminds me of the story. Jesus essentially did the same thing in the New Testament, which is the story of the rich young ruler. Many of you guys are familiar with this. But there's a guy, he's rich, young ruler. He comes up and he asks Jesus, essentially, hey, how do I get to heaven? What do I have to do? And Jesus replies, well, you got to love God with all your heart, and you got to love your neighbor as yourself. And the guy says, oh, well, good, pass the test. And Jesus says, and one more thing. And I like to think that the guy was turning to walk away like, yeah, I got this nailed. And Jesus is like, oh, yeah, by the way, what, what else? He says, I want you to sell all of your possessions and give that money to the poor. Hmm. Now, does that mean that you can't have any money if you want to serve God? No, that's not the point of the story. The point is what was most important to the rich young ruler was his riches. And Jesus says, I want that. Hmm. What was perhaps most important to Abraham was this child of promise given by God that he waited for for 25 years. And God tests Abraham's faith and says, hey, I want your kid. Yeah. It's this deep, heart-wrenching thing. And I'm just going to say this as, as your pastors. God gives peace, and he gives forgiveness, and he protects us, and he guides us, and he loves us. We, t- we talk about that often, and that is 100% true. 
But God also wants something of us. And what he wants is what is most important to us. Because he wants us to get to a place where we can take what's most important to us and surrender that to him. Yeah, and it kind of reminds me of just this word, idol. You know, I remember when I first going through high school, I remember I was at Tejas. I got a call. There was no reception. So I couldn't take the call. And, but I got my first job going into my junior year of high school. And my parents had always instilled in me, like, you have to work. You have to go out and make money. Like, you're not going to continue to smooch off me. And I'm like, why not? I thought you loved me. <laughs> um, but, it, but it was, I had to go work. And eventually as I worked, hey, I started to make money. I bought a car. I started to put stuff. had a Jeep. So all the money went to the Jeep to put accessories in it, which I don't know why I did that. But money turned into this, like, almost an idol because it was the most important thing. It started to sometimes even pull me away from church. It started to... Um, just kind of, yeah, it was just the most important. And I remember I got to a point where I finally had like a management position and I told him, hey, I can't work Sundays and I can't work Wednesdays, period. And I was like, I'm about to get fired. But in that moment, they were like, hey, no, we'll, we'll honor that like for you. We want to bless you to do that. You have those days off and no one can take them from you. And it was huge because I got to be part of church again and really devote myself to church. And But it was one of those things of what's most important. And maybe for some of us, it's not, it's not working, but... Is, is it a sport that's taking up your time? It's not so much time, but what's most important? Is it a relationship? Is it, you know, some of you, it's video games, it's possessions, it's stuff we own. And, um, and sometimes maybe you're not going to give up a child, but there are things in our lives that are super important to us. And God says, are you going to allow that to bear you out? Or you want, are you going to follow me? The Bible's pretty clear that God wants to be number one. Right. He wants to be the most important thing and person in our lives. And so I'm telling you, it's going to come a time whenever something, if anything in your life is, is jockeying with uh, position as number one with God, he's going to say, you know what, you got to surrender that thing to me. So that was point number two. God wants what is most important to you. So let's keep going to the story. God tells Abraham, okay, I want Isaac back. And miraculously, Abraham is like, okay, let's go. And so they begin this journey. Mm-hmm. Right, they begin walking, and by the way, it's not just a walk around the block, it's like three days walking. Like right, so they pack up the bags and everything. And so, Abraham has a lot of time to think about this decision. I don't know if he had the conversation with his wife beforehand, probably not. Like, hey, what are you gonna where are you going? I'm gonna go kill the kid. Like, he probably didn't say that. <laughs> uh, I don't think that would have gone over really well, but so he's walking for three days, right? There's, there's no radio or music or anything, right? He has a lot of time to think, like, okay, this, is, this isn't just a quick decision, this is a heart decision, yeah. So they keep walking, and we'll skip down to verse 7. Isaac finally clues in into what's going on. He, he Evidently, Dad told him, hey, we're going to go do this sacrifice thing. In verse 7, he says, hey, Dad, we have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Like, do 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 Something's <laughs> going on here. Something is missing. He had seen this done before, and so he recognizes, hey, where, where's the thing that we're going to kill and offer as the sacrifice? Where's the sheep? And I want you to look at Abraham's faith, at dad's faith, because there is nothing recorded between that question and his response. And I think it came like that. Abraham says, God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. First thing out of his mouth, God will provide. God will provide. His faith, here we go. His faith is there. His faith is strong. There's been no sheep conversation up until then. Remember, literally God's words were, hey, I want Isaac. Go and offer Isaac. There's no mention of sheep. And it's not like, hey, if you pass the test, I'll come through for you. No. But Abraham believes, he's like, no, God God will provide. And so they both walked on together. Yeah, and it's crazy. What I love verse 9. It's pretty intense. Um, but I'm just going to paraphrase it, and we're going to go to the last verse. But basically, they arrived at the place where God had told them to go. Abraham built this, uh, this altar, arranged all the wood, did all the stuff. And then Scripture says, then he tied up Isaac. I don't know. That to me was just like, oh, then he ties up Isaac and laid him on the altar. On top of the wood, and then, and then Abraham picks up a knife. And verse 11 steps in and says, At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. And I love Abraham's response. He says, Yes, here I am. So in that moment, the angel of the Lord intervenes and kind of just flows into our next point. The next point, the last point, is uh, number three. God's timing is always perfect. Mm-hmm. Have you found this to be true? God's timing is always perfect. Rarely is his timing what we want it to be. We would like it sooner. We'd like it laid out real clear and give me all the details, please. But, but God's timing is always perfect. There's a greater story that's going on. 
there are things happening right now in your life and you're in the spiritual world around you that you can't see, that you don't realize it's happening. And maybe you've been praying recently like, okay, God, do this, do this. I believe, I got faith, do this. And he's not doing it. Well, that doesn't mean God's mad at you. It doesn't mean that you're not praying hard enough or good enough. It doesn't mean that you have like this little, that's not the point. The point is there's a bigger story. Isaiah 55, eight, God speaking of himself, he describes himself. He says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. They're just different. And my ways are far beyond anything that you could imagine. He, he, God functions on a different realm. He can't, we can't see what he is doing behind the scenes. Like it's just impossible. He's so far beyond us. And this is why in faith, we have to trust him. This is why in faith, Abraham was like, okay, you, you want Isaac? I trust you with Isaac. Yeah. I trust you with my life. I trust you in everything. You can't always see what's going on. My mom, several times growing up, she's told me this story. Years ago, she was leading like a missions trip. She had a big group of people and they needed a miracle, right? Something came up and they needed like several thousands of dollars and they didn't have it, right? And so they began to pray and literally like at the last minute, a miracle happened, super cool story. Well, as she reflected on that and as she told other people about it, she would say, hey, guess what God did? He provided this miracle. <laughs> He's always late. Feels like he's always behind schedule, right? We were praying. We needed that before, but he showed up, so thank God. And then one day she was praying, and she was having a conversation with God, and God said, hey, Karen, why don't you stop saying that about me? I'm never late. I created time. I know every minute. I know every second. I know every hair that's on your head. I have it all laid out perfect. So when you think I'm late, I'm actually right on time because sometimes I'll wait until the last possible moment when only I can get the glory. So when only, only I can do that. Yeah. From that moment on, my mom's like, yes, sir. <laughs> God is always on time. Yeah. Again, it's not, sometimes it's not when we want it to be. Sometimes it doesn't go as we want it to go. But up until this point in my life, every time I turn around and I look backwards into the history of Micah, I can see, oh, that's what God was doing. Oh, I get it now. I didn't understand it then. It was really hard then. It was like a test then. But, oh, I get it. God was right on time. He came through. Yeah, and the same thing happens in the story. It's as you continue to read, yes, Abraham's ready. He's trusting in the Lord. May not understand it all, but he's going in faith. And as soon as the angel of the Lord says that, he says, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham responds. Verse 12 says, don't lay a hand on the boy. The angel says, do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. And my question to all of us is, okay, God wants to know where our heart and where, where our heart is. So my question for you is, where is your heart? Is, are you holding stuff back? You're like, God, I'll give you everything except this. Or are we gonna give everything we have to God no matter what the cost, no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to trust you with everything. And there's been so many times even in my life where I have to come to a point where like, okay, I don't understand what's gonna go on, but God, I trust you. And my life is yours. And as I do that, there's, so, there's all this, there's so much peace knowing that God is in control, not me. Because if I continue to try to maneuver my way, it's so stressful. But I just want to be able to, just like Abraham, God, whatever you want, I'm going to give to you. No matter what the stake is, no matter how, no matter what it is, my life is yours. Yeah. To wrap up, I want to just remind us of the, the prayer that Jesus prayed. It's at the end of his life, at the end of his ministry. It's literally the night before he was arrested, beaten, and ultimately crucified. He's in the garden, and he's praying, and he's really struggling with what's about to happen to him. He knew the pain that he was about to go through, the shame that he was about to endure. Like, he knows it. And so he actually prays, essentially, God, if there's any way this can, like, pass over me, if there's any way this doesn't have to happen, that would be amazing. But then in the very next breath, in Luke 22, 42, he says, not my will, but your will be done. In other words, not what I want, but I submit, I, I surrender my life to you. Whatever you want, that's what I'm gonna do. And so the point of this talk tonight for you guys, whether you're watching online or you're in the room tonight, I wanna bring you to this point to where spiritually speaking, you can say, God, my life is yours. Everything I have 
it's yours. Most of the time, God just wants us to get to a place where we say that. He's not going to take anything away. I mean, he tested Abraham's faith. He didn't take Isaac. Yeah, Isaac stayed. But God wanted to know, is he mine? Will you surrender that? That's good. That's good. And so in your life, maybe there's a situation you're just struggling with. and you're, I want you to surrender that to God. Say, God, my life is yours and, and this thing too. You've got a dream, a plan, a future thing. You've got something that is just near and dear to your heart. The best way that you can live is to surrender and say, God, it's yours. It's yours. My life is yours. Everything is yours. My issues are yours. My sins are yours. I pray to you about those. But God, I give you everything. So if you're in the room tonight, I want you to stand. And as you stand, I want you to think about this. We're going to pray together. And here in just a second, we're going to sing. And we're going to sing the song. We actually did it last week. It was called Available. But the words are exactly what I'm talking about. God, here I am. Here's my life. I'm available. You can lead me. You can guide me. You can do whatever with me. My life, it's not mine. It's yours. And so I want you to close your eyes. And between you and God, nobody's watching and nobody, it doesn't matter. But between you and God, I want you to answer this question. Are you living for you? Is your life just for you? Or are you willing to surrender your life and everything in it to God and say, God, my life is yours. I am indeed available. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone that has heard this message. This is the big question that you ask of us. You ask us to trust you with everything. You asked Abraham to trust you with everything multiple times. And Abraham, he passed that test. And in my life, God, I want to pass that one. I want for every student to pass that test, God. It's scary to trust. We don't know all the details. But God, if we really think about it, the best way to live is to trust. God, I would much rather have you be in control of my life than me try and control it because I'm not that smart. I'm not that good. So God, tonight I confess you're, you're in charge. I trust you. For every student, I pray that they would come to the place where they say, God, I trust you. And right now, I want you just between you and God to pray and say, God, I trust you. If something specific comes to mind, well then name that thing. God, I trust you with this thing. God, I think you want me to surrender this thing to you. Name that thing. God, I I give this plan to you. I give this hurt to you. I give this dream to you. Whatever it is, my life is yours. And God, as these students begin to do that, as they begin to surrender, then I pray in Jesus' name that your peace and the power of the Holy Spirit would come on each one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing this song, and it's really just an extension of this prayer that we're praying. So the band's gonna lead us and I invite you to sing as a response to this message. Here we go.
Hey guys, I'm so glad that you were able to experience service with us online, but I want to let you know something. You're invited to come and join us in person. That's right. On Wednesday nights from 7 to 8 p.m., we're meeting right here in this room in the main sanctuary, so we have plenty of space to spread out. It's been so cool to be able to have some students in the room, some of you guys in the room, to experience worship together, to, to see each other, and there's just something different when we gather together as the church. Online has been awesome, but I wanna invite you to come, if you're able to, from 7 to 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. You gotta wear a mask. We're keeping everyone super spread out. It is safe, but it is also an amazing experience that I want you to be part of. So if you're able to, come join us this Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m. right here in this room.